your father died in 2017. Your mother died in 2019. Do you miss them? Very much so. Is there a memory, uh, that fond memory that stands out, or maybe what have you learned from them? From my mother, uh, I mean, she was very much uh, my inspiration for pursuing intellectual work because um, she studied at the university and then uh, because of the Second World War, after the Second World War, she, she was born in Bulgaria. They, they immigrated to, to Israel and, uh, and she left university to work on a farm. And uh, later in life, when all the kids left home, she went back to the university and finished the PhD. But she planted in me the intellectual curiosity and valuing uh, learning as, uh, or, or acquiring knowledge as a very important element uh, in life. And, uh, and my uh, love with philosophy came from attending classes that she took at the university. Uh, when I was a teenager, um, I was uh, fortunate to go to some of these and um, they inspired me later on. And I'm very different than my colleagues, as you can tell, uh, <laughs> because my upbringing was quite different. And the only reason I'm doing physics or astrophysics is because of circumstances. I, uh, at age 18, I was asked to serve in the military. And uh, uh, the only way for me to pursue intellectual work uh, was to work on physics because that was the closest to philosophy. Mm. And I was good at physics, so they admitted me to an elite program called Talpiot that allowed me to finish my PhD at age 24 and uh, to actually propose the first uh, international project that was funded by the Star Wars initiative of Ronald Reagan. And that brought me, brought me to the US to visit Washington DC where we were funded from. And then uh, on one of the visits, I went to uh, the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton and uh, met John Bacall that later offered me a five-year fellowship there under the condition that I'll switch to astrophysics. At which point, you know, I said, okay, I cannot give up on this opportunity. I'll do it, switch to astrophysics. It felt like a forced uh, marriage, kind of arranged marriage. Yes. And then uh, I was offered the position at uh, Harvard because nobody wanted that. Uh, they first selected someone else and that someone said, I don't want to become a junior faculty at the Harvard Astronomy Department because the chance for being promoted are very small. So he took another job. And then I was second in line. They gave it to me. I didn't care much because I could go back to the farm any day, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, after three years, I was tenured. Yes. And uh, wow. eventually, a decade later, became the chair of this department yes. and served for nine years as the chair of the Astronomy Department at Harvard. But at that point, it became clear to me that I'm actually married to the love of my life. Even though it was an arranged marriage, there are many philosophical questions in astrophysics that we can address. But I'm still very different than my colleagues, you know, that yes. uh, were focusing on technical skills in getting to this uh, job. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mother was really uh, extremely instrumental in, in planting the seeds of, sort of thinking about the big picture. Uh, in me. Then my father, he was, you know, he was working in the farm and we didn't speak much because we sort of understood each other without speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what he uh, uh, gave me is a sense of, uh, you know, that it's more important to do things than to talk about them. I love the, the, the I mean, I, my apologies, but MIT mind and hand, I love that there's uh that the root of philosophy that you've gained from your mom and uh, the the hand that action is all that ultimately in the end matters from your dad. That's that's <laughs> that's really powerful.